Reverse T3 is a big deal on the internet. Um, and it's because a lot of docs are beginning to use it for assessment of chronic fatigue syndrome. In a related video, I described the background and science of exactly what T3 is. But I made the point that the science lo logic would support using reverse T3. However, the science evidence itself is not very good in, that in this area. Well, here's an article I'll be talking about in this video that actually shows some significant scientific evidence um, leading toward that conclusion that maybe uh, reverse T3 is elevated in chronic fatigue syndrome. This is a case control study. It was, uh, it was published uh, this year, actually uh, <clears throat> March 2018, in Frontiers in Endocrinology under the thyroid endocrinology section. Um, this uh, Frontiers in Endocrinology is certainly not the New England Journal of Medicine and or JAMA or Nature Magazine. It's not one of the globally uh, read, respected frontline uh, magazines. But again, it's uh, it, this appears to be a well um, uh, reviewed, a well uh, designed, a well carried out study. And again, it does show some interesting things about reverse T3 elevation in patients with chronic fatigue syndrome. So let's, uh, let's go a little bit deeper. I'm not going to spend um, a lot of time on this article because, again, I don't think it's enough to, um, to totally change the standards of medicine, but it's clearly enough to raise your eyebrows. Uh, where was it uh, uh, done? In Groningen, the uh, University Medical Center of Groningen, and that's in the Netherlands, in case you uh, weren't aware. Uh, there was also some participation from faculty at uh, Madrid, Spain, and uh, Munich in the Netherlands as well. Uh, chronic uh, fatigue syndrome, hypothyroidism, and um, <clears throat> you'll often hear terms like euthyroid, uh, thyroid disease. Um, again, a lot of focus on uh, free uh, reverse T3. And the ratio with um, an increased... Uh, reverse T3 over free T3. That's just a reminder. Now, <clears throat> in the and I covered this in the other study, T3 and T4 basically refer to the number of um, iodine components of thyroid hormone. The thyroid hormone pre uh, creates T4. Uh, T4 is not very active, however. The body tissue takes a, one of the four iodines off of that molecule off of that T4, that makes T3. And T3 is what's active. It's active thyroid um, uh, hormone. <clears throat> so if you have low T3 and you have chronic fatigue, that's, I don't think anybody would argue about that, that that's probably hypothyroidism and that the low T3 very, very likely is a potential cause, very likely cause. Um, but it's pa patients that have normal T3 but elevated reverse T3 that people begin to wonder about because reverse T3 is made by other tissues of the body. It's um, <clears throat> made with a diodinase, um, diodinases or uh, enzymes that take iodine off of T4. <clears throat> and you remember I said that uh, to form T3, or free T3, active thyroid hormone, you take one specific iodine off. <clears throat> Reverse T3 has one specific iodine taken off as well, but not the same one. And in fact, that um, reverse T3, with the iodine in the wrong place, the wrong iodine, quote wrong iodine removed, is... Um, actually fairly inert. It doesn't have the, um, the metabolic activities that free T3 does. So again, that's the scientific and medical rationale for saying free T3 is taking up spaces. It doesn't increase your metabolism. So therefore, if you've got a, uh, I mean, uh, reverse T3 is taking up spaces away from T3. And uh, therefore, if you've got an elevated reverse T3, 
that may be why you have chronic fatigue. And again, uh, you don't you don't need to listen to me. There are dozens of docs singing that tune in uh, on the YouTube. But as I said before in the other video, all of that sounds very logical. Uh, reverse T3 doesn't work very well, or it's it's not active. So it's actually a uh, mechanism for the body to slow down T3 activity where it needs to and when it needs to. Um, a couple of other points about the uh, mechanism. Uh, these docs will say the most common uh, reasons for having um, elevated reverse T3 and this chronic fatigue would be, um, some docs will say uh, insulin resistance, but almost all of them will say uh, malnutrition, decreased uh, caloric intake on an ongoing basis. Well, actually, you do see that. Um, it does appear that reverse T3 is a way for the body to take the foot off the gas pedal and slow down on the metabolic uh, burn rate. And yes, that very well may be the mechanism that you see, uh, that you see when um, you see the decreased me uh, basal metabolic burn rate for patients that are on um, what's called cal caloric restriction. In other words, a 30% or more decrease in calories on an ongoing basis. Now, let's go back to this article and look at what they actually saw. It's not a huge article. They did a case control, about 100 cases, 98, I think, in, um, in one group and uh, about 100 controls. This uh, summary sheet here goes through how these uh, cases were um, picked. Uh, as you can see, they started with 250 cases in the Parkstead Clinic there in, the Nether in uh, Groningen. Um, they did a randomized letter, got 150, um, 109 agreed to participate. Uh, they had three from the non-Parkstad uh, non clinic. And again, it goes down the line here in terms of showing where they ruled people out. For example, <clears throat> in people that had elevated C-reactive protein or evidence of, uh, of um, inflammatory states where they had a BMI of greater than 30, uh, they already had known hypo or hyperthyroidism. Um, <clears throat> so again, multiple reasons they use for taking people out of the case um, case control analysis. Now this actually shows the um, some of the information that uh, some of the key information that you would see. And the bottom line was uh, they did see some minimal uh, decrease in uh, free T3. But they saw a significant increase in um, reverse T3. Not a lot of differences in, in many of the other normal um, thyroid indicators. So again, very interesting in terms of somebody like myself who's looking for the literature, the scientific evidence, which might indicate that yes, uh, what you're hearing could be true. There could be some evidence behind it that um, uh, having f uh, elevated reverse uh, T3 may actually be a significant cause of uh, chronic fat fatigue. Does this article itself prove it? Oh, no, I don't think so. I think we've still got a long way to go. But again, I wanted to put that uh, out there and make folks aware of it so they can begin to see... Um, see that there are some potential differences here and some significant potential uh, evidence. <clears throat> um, thank you for your interest.